I started to write this mini documentary, I was not sure if I should make a complete video about all of Spaceport Lisbeth and include both of the rides that was part of this project or if I should divide them. But during the process, I realized that I needed to keep them apart. To keep it interesting, and because both Lisebye's tune at UFO 23 and Similar Tour deserves their time and explanation. This is Coaster Stop, and a mini documentary about Lisebye's tune at UFO 23 at the amusement park Lisebye in Gothenburg, Sweden. Before we dig into Lisebye's tune at UFO 23, we need to mention Spaceport Lisebye. Spaceport Lisebye was a space facility that opened at Lisebye in 1990. Spaceport Lisebye was the biggest investment in the park's history up to this point, and the cost was 110 million Swedish crowns, 11 million euros. A tower on top of the mountain was part of the general plan of Lisebye since 1975, so it was about time when the park started planning for a spaceport. The stairway that was built up to and was part of Spaceport was from the beginning called Stairway to the Galaxy, or in Swedish Galaxtrappan. Spaceport was also the first step towards a park that was open also in the winter time. A big part of Spaceport Lisebye was Lisebye's tune at UFO 23. The Tower Lisebye's tune at UFO 23 was a lookout tower with a rotating cabin with glass windows. The tower is 116 meters tall, or 146 meters above sea level. It is manufactured by Wagner and Biro. Original name of the ride is Spiral Tower. Lift height of the gondola is 85 meters, or 115 meters above sea level. The cabin has a maximum rotating speed of 3 rotates per minute. The cabin itself seats 70 riders at the same time and the hourly capacity of the ride is 800 persons. The cabin very suitably looked just like the name, a UFO. Spaceport Lisebye wouldn't have been a real spaceport without a UFO. The ride experience. Lisebye's tune at UFO 23 was a bit like a Disney ride, because here we were presented with a pre-show before entering the ride itself. And thanks to this video found on YouTube, the pre-show is preserved. Det är inte ett byggnadsarbete på Liseberg om man då har gjort sensationella fynd på Berlin. Forskare som är på plats sätter nu fynden i samband med gamla eltagelser av utfos över Göteborg. Man får nu besked om att man hittar något som kan vara en så kallad svart låda över till Liseberg. Thank you. 
I know it is in Swedish, but it's still kind of cool to watch. After the pre-show, you walk into the cabin and take your seats. Of course, I remember the view from this ride, but something that I remembered more was the bunnies land. The ride started with going down a level, instead of up to the top. What happened was that you went down to the bunny's land. Stop. Wait, wait, wait. Lisebay, are you saying that we are going down to the bunny's land? This sounds very familiar. Anyway, let's keep this video going. In the bunny's land, you saw animatronic Lisebay bunnies that were singing Heidi Hey, Kola Viking Grey. Heidi hey, här är det okej. Vi kom hit från rymden hit till Liseberg. Heidi hi, look what a thing. Heidi hi, here is okay. We came from space to Liseberg. We also got to see where the bunnies went after they landed on Earth with UFO 23. Stop. Wait, wait, wait. I am starting to see a pattern here. Lisebay may have some explaining to do. Area 51 and UFO sightings I have heard of, but apparently Lisebay is the place that we shall have our eyes on. Could it really be that Lisebay bunnies are extraterrestrials? And that they came from space to live here on Lisebay? Further investigation needed. I wonder if there is any signs of UFOs or outer space in Kaninlandet or the ride Underlandet. As many mini documentaries here on Coaster Stop, this part does not have a Disney ending. In the year 2000, the bunny land part of Lisebay Stunet UFO 23 was sadly removed. Very sad to be honest, because in my opinion, this is what made the ride so special. After visiting the Space Bunnies underground, the climb to the top began. It is not much more to say than that the view was breathtaking. For me, the favorite part was of course to get the overlook of Lisebay, but the view of the rest of Gothenburg was still fantastic. But this is not quite right though. The first years of operation, the bunnies was with you all the way to the top. A fictive conversation between ground control and the crew of UFO 23 was played. This story was later replaced by a female voice that was narrating the view of Gothenburg. The speakers were synced to the seats and the view so that you would hear what you were watching or watch what you would hear. You get the point. The later years of the ride, just classical music was played. Not only was the Bunnyland removed in the year 2000, also the name UFO 23 was gone and the ride was now solely named Lisebay Stunet. But there was something else that happened this year. Lisebay opened a new season. Christmas at Lisebay. What is Christmas without a Christmas tree? And we need a big one. Let's say around 150 meters tall. 
Lise Bergstonet has since the year 2000 been transformed into Gothenburg's biggest Christmas tree during Christmas at Liseberg. Happenings Two months after opening in 1990, the cabin stopped at a height of 35 meters. The passengers remained stuck for two hours. The day after, it happened again, at the same height. This time the passengers were only stuck for around one hour. Gothenburg is quite known for its humor, or Göteborg's humor. Of course, we weren't slow when it came to Liseberg's Tunet. Before the stop, it was called Synnålen, sight needle, because it looked like a needle, and you had a great view from the cabin. After the stop, it was named Stop Nålen, stop needle, because it looks like a needle, and it stopped. Get it? Stop Nolan. When the park fixed the ride, it was instead named A. Fail Tunet, No Fault Tower, or Eiffel Tower. Another ride at the park named Helix is also known as Felix when it doesn't work, or Felix. Fail is wrong or fault in Swedish, so that would be Faultix. Felix. Yeah, we are of a special breed in Gothenburg with our Gothenburg humor or Göteborg's humor. In 2008, the ride stopped once again, this time at 48 meters height with 18 people on board. All 18 was recovered to Earth within the next two hours. Fun facts. Did you know that there is a staircase inside the spire, so you could actually walk up to the top? It is only 505 steps. The star of the Christmas tree is mounted and dismounted by the help of a helicopter each year. When the lights on the Christmas tree is turned on, it is live streamed through different medias. In 2020, when the park was closed, Liseberg decided to not turn on the Christmas tree to save money. This was not well met by the Gothenburgers, so the park changed their mind and at least we had the lights on for the Christmas season even if we couldn't visit the park. The closure of Liseberg's Tunet and opening of Atmosphere. In 2010, Liseberg's Tunet closed forever, but the tower is still in its place and in use, just a bit different. On a radio interview with the former CEO of the park, Mats Vedin, he was asked if they didn't remove the view of the park now. As a reply, Mats said, no we don't, we just make it more exciting. And more exciting it got. We are not going to talk about atmosphere today, that's for a different video. But there is a commercial of atmosphere, the brand new ride for Liseberg's 2011 season and the tallest drop tower in Europe.
Thank you so much for watching Lisa Bice Tunet UFO 23 mini documentary. Please leave a comment, like the video and subscribe to my channel. This is Coaster Stop and you just watched another mini documentary here on the channel. Let me know what you want to see next. And if you have any pictures or videos or stories that you want to share with me on a ride from Lisbeth, please let me know in the comments or send me an email to info at